Welcome once again to a Thursday morning edition of Breakfast Central. We're uh, taking a conversation now to Zimbabwe, where that country has overtaken Lebanon in food inflation, placing the southern African country in the first spot with the highest food inflation of 353%. Lebanon is now ranked number two at 240% food inflation rate, followed by Venezuela at 131%, Sri Lanka 91%, Turkey 90%, Iran 81%, Argentina 66%, Moldova 38%, uh, Ethiopia 36%, and Rwanda 34%. Prices of basic foodstuffs and other commodities have soared in Zimbabwe, while some food items are being charged in United States dollars at a time when most workers are being paid in the local currency. The price of basic commodities like milli meal, bread milk, sugar have seen an all time high. The Zimbabwe National Statistics Agency, ZIMSTAT's August statistics revealed that month-on-month -month inflation on food and non-alcoholic beverages stood at 14.2% after shedding 14.9 percentage points on the July 2022 rate of 29.1%. Now, uh, joining us from Harare, Zimbabwe, to shed more light on this is Prosper Chitambara, uh, who's a development uh, economist. Good morning, Mr. Chitambara. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me once again. All right. Um, now, 353% is, is not, you know, figures that anyone should be excited about, you know, and they're currently number one in the world, the highest in the world. What would you say is, might be causing this hyperinflation in food? Well, I would say there are two main factors. The first one is the fact that our agricultural season, the 2021-2022 agricultural season, was way below our expectations. In fact, the agricultural sector is estimated or projected to have to decline by 5% uh, just this year. So there were massive declines in crop production. Uh, so obviously that limited uh, local uh, supply of food, which had an inflationary impact uh, in terms of uh, the price of uh, basic foodstuffs. Then obviously the external geopolitical factors, uh, we saw a massive increase in price of commodities. Of course, we, we still continue to import wheat and there was a massive increase uh, in the price of wheat. Of course, that didn't affect just Zimbabwe alone. It affected uh, almost everyone. But uh, that also had an, uh, an impact, uh, an adverse impact in terms of our food inflation. Then also generally the price uh, pricing in Zimbabwe is is increasing. Uh, inflation is increasing. General inflation is increasing. Our um, August uh, annual inflation rate is uh, 285 percent, which actually places Zimbabwe as number one, not just in Africa but also in the world. So I would say uh, those factors, uh, in particular the diminished agricultural production, has had a massive inflationary impact in terms of uh, food prices. Uh, we know that certainly one of the major reasons why this um, hyperinflation, um, hyperinflation is a problem will be the fact that the currency, the local currency, has had some struggle over the years. Now, we know that the majority of Zimbabweans are paid in the local currency. However, some of these goods are paid in um, U.S. dollars. Now, how does this dynamic play out and what is the way forward? Well, it's, 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 it's really a major challenge, especially for the ordinary uh, citizen. Uh, we are now, the, the economy is to all intents and purposes uh, dollarized of course gov the government is still maintaining the multi currency regime but uh, when you consider the fact that about nine well, the bulk of our economic activities are informal and uh, the majority of uh, the labor force is also informally employed in fact according to the 2022 labor force uh, survey the latest labor force survey from the zimbabwe national statistics agency about 88% of Zimbabweans are informally employed and uh, they are really struggling to, to eke out a living. So I think it's, it's, it's a major challenge for the ordinary person on the ground uh, who is actually struggling to, to, to eke out a living. Uh, incomes have largely, for most people, incomes are still uh, denominated in Zim dollars, even though some uh, companies have uh, decide if now adopted a, a blended approach in terms of their the salaries for their workers whereby a certain proportion of the salary component is paid in zim dollars and then a certain uh, proportion is paid uh, in a uh, foreign currency in the us dollar or in, in in the zimbabwe dollar but at the official exchange rate 
So when you look at uh, wage increases, uh, they, they've lagged uh, way behind uh, inflation. The current uh, average minimum wage is about 86,000 uh, Zim dollars, uh, whereas uh, an average household would require uh, probably around 300,000 uh, Zim dollars per month to be able uh, to subsist or to earn a, a, a living. So I think that's the major challenge that uh, incomes are failing uh, to keep pace uh, with inflation. Well, um, you know, in, in between, you know, somewhere around these conversations, you know, you can also read and see uh, some accusations that the Zimbabwean government is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, changing the uh, inflation figures, you know, or, or reducing the inflation figures on Zimstat's website and all, or some of all of that. People would argue otherwise regardless. But uh, what would you say could be done to curb this rise in inflation? And what more do you think the government may want to try at this point? Well, I think uh, the, the, the way forward is to address the key drivers of, of the inflation. And in this case, the key drivers have been the unsustainable money supply growth. Uh, of course, we have seen government uh, uh, announcing and implementing reforms around the fiscal policy, uh, reforms around even the monetary policy to try to limit uh, money supply growth. But of course, the major downside risk is that uh, we are heading into an election next year. And we are also heading into the next the, the, the agricultural season. And all those two events are normally associated with a massive increase uh, in government spending. And depending obviously on how that spending is going to be financed, it would generate a, a additional inflationary pressures uh, in the economy. But so far, we have seen government adopting a very conservative, a very tight mandate policy and also an equally tight uh, fiscal policy uh, with government limiting uh, uh, ex ex excessive payments uh, to government contractors. So that has had a stabilizing effect uh, in terms of um, uh, the prices and also even in terms of the exchange rate. So uh, whether or not that will be sustained given um, the looming elections and given the, the need to finance the uh, next agricultural season, I think uh, time will tell. Um, Prosper, we also have information that about 3.8 million Zimbabweans are said to be food insecure at the moment. Now, sometime in August, Dubai did more than that. More than it's that, right? Five, five, about 5.5 yeah. years. Great. According to uh, the World Food Program. All right. Now, we know that there was also some aid that was sent in by the UAE sometime in August. And the World Food Program has budgeted about fifty million dollars, saying that they're going to use this to commence help in um, sometime in October. How much impact do you think this will make in the current struggles? Well, I think uh, it, it, yes, it will have some impact, but it's not going to be very significant. I think what's required is probably for government to to do more, uh, especially around social protection. Uh, when you look at our social protection spending. Uh, not just this year, but over the past few years, it's been well, grossly inadequate. So I think what donors are doing should really uh, supplement or even complement what government is already doing. But in terms of our uh, public spending in those critical sectors that reduce poverty and enhance welfare, I think that we still have some challenges. So we, we, government obviously needs to do more. Uh, in terms of our social uh, spending, our social protection spending, in terms of general uh, social sector spending around other critical sectors like healthcare, uh, education, uh, as well as uh, even water and sanitation. Really sad, and we hope that the um, government of uh, MSN Menangagwa, you know, knows what must be done, and of course, it is as dedicated as possible to it. Prosper, thank you so much for your time this morning. Looking forward to speaking with you again. Thanks so much for having me.